What's up, everybody? Welcome to the May, finally we're getting to it, the May uh, Patreon Hangout and uh, Q&A. So I'm pretty excited about this one. We're going to be doing that shelf project. I've, I've been, it's been on the list for a long time. I've just had so many random projects and other things outside of the shop that I haven't gotten to it, but now we're going to do it. So let me switch camera views real quick and I'll kind of show you what's happening over there. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. So I'm going to be using a uh, Lumilite's Deep Pour. Today I got some left. I'm gonna have to get some more because I got a baseball bat project planned that I still haven't gotten on. Um, but this is the mold right here. Uh, yeah, okay, good, I have my, my camera angle. So what I've done is this is all half inch. Um, I, that's all I had, I had some half inch. This is a pretty easy way to do things is just you know grab uh, you know like a half inch sheet for the base and then just cut out, you know, I just cut all these pieces on the table saw and uh, just cut out some more half inch. And what I've done is used pocket holes. Um, and for anybody that doesn't really know, isn't really in like the woodworking world and doesn't know what pocket holes are, um, pocket holes are, you, you, you basically cut this kind of diagonal thing into the side using a jig. I have a, I have a jig over here. I can kind of show you just in case anybody doesn't really know what they are um, and there's like different ones i kind of got the the souped up version um, because i was doing a lot more like furniture and stuff so this is the, the jig and basically what you do is you stick your board in here and then you drill and it's drilling at an angle and you get this kind of specific um, sideways hole that you can then screw down using that um, so that's not the best description. I didn't really think about, you know, talking about the pocket holes that much on this, but um, that'll be a good one to just, there's tons of videos out there. Um, Craig, K-R-E-G makes the jigs and they just came out with a new jig that's awesome. It's like an all-in-one thing. It's like, I want to say it's only like 50 bucks, which is like, frankly, I want to buy that one because it looks like it has some better things. Mine's like 10 or 15 years old. Uh, but anyway, if you want to be doing this kind of stuff, that's a really simple and easy way to, to attach all this stuff. We, one, one little tip I'll give you guys with pocket hole joinery. Um, you really want to clamp everything in place. You can't just kind of wing it, hold it, <laughs> like hold it with your hand and try and drill, you know, screw these things down. You really need to have everything locked in place so it doesn't move around on you. Um, so I had, I actually did it on this and I had clamps holding it in a couple places and then I shot all my screws in. Um, but it's a very simple way to do things. It's also a good thing for shop furniture and stuff, like simple joinery. You don't need to make, you know, like hand cut joinery and all that kind of stuff. Um, pocket holes work, they're, they're, they're pretty easy, quick, and, uh, and everything's just a butt joint. You don't have to mess around with any kind of weird joinery. It's just however you lay it out. So we got that, I Tyvek taped the whole thing, and for anybody that doesn't know what that is, frankly, I don't exactly know what it is, but Tyvek is a brand, and it's just this tape that the, the outside surface is non-stick, and so you cover all the surfaces, I did all the sides, everything, and then just kind of cleaned it up. And then on the inside, I also caulked the, the corners. So I got caulking everywhere, I, I wasn't, particularly worried about how it looked because I'm going to have a lot of cleanup to do on this piece. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter if it was perfect or not. Um, so everything's ready. It's all dried. And then we have these two chunks of wood that I actually put these guys in the oven for a week. <laughs> so I'm hoping that they're nice and, uh, and dry. They were already dry, pretty dry. Um, anyway, they'd been sitting in my shop for many years. Um, so let me see if I can kind of get this stuff out of the way. The idea is, yeah, this one goes here. That's going to go like that. And this one's going to go like this. And then our resin is going to be here. Now I have this hardware. This is going to be a floating shelf. That's what I want to make. And it's going to go on that wall behind where we kind of open up, um, you know, like where I do the opening stuff. But I got this hardware from Rockler, and they're basically these pins that one of them you jam into a, you drill a hole into your two by four stud in the wall and stick part of it in the wall. And then the other part you do drill the same hole into your shelf and it just holds it on the wall with no hardware or anything. So I'm hoping that this works. This is gonna be a pretty heavy shelf, but I did buy the, 
I don't know if this is the, the heavy duty one or not. I, I bought some heavy duty ones that should hold like 300 pounds or I don't know. Yeah, this one says it's rated for 50, but I bought some, some heavy duty ones. I don't know where they are offhand. They're over in my pile somewhere. But anyway, that's the plan. Um, it should be fun. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do two colors. I got, I'm, I'm really into these fluorescents. So we're going to do fluorescent red and a little bit of fluorescent orange. And again, kind of do that, that double pour, pour at the same time. And I want to kind of have it, you know, like red to orange. Actually, I think it's going to be orange on the outside and then to red this way. So it should be kind of fun. I don't know. Should be an interesting little project. We're going to put 60 ounces in each one of these cups. I'm going to add red. I'm going to add orange. And then we're going to put around 20, 120, 30 ounces in this one. And I'm going to put yellow fluorescent dye in this. And we're just going to pour that at the end. We'll just kind of see how that works. <clears throat> I think you're better off pouring it down to the bottom and letting it kind of meet and flow up to get kind of separations. But I'm not that worried if it's perfect or not, you know, not a big deal. So again, this is deep pour. It's an epoxy product from Alumalite. Um, and it's meant to be poured for like river tables. And technically it should be able to handle this volume with no problems, um, probably up to about two inches. I think that's what they say. Does that say something on here? I don't know. They, it, it's, it's definitely deeper pouring and it's meant for river tables. So, you know, should be good up to two inches in just about any volume. Let's break open a new part A. How about that? And where's my red mark? Here we go. All right, so we got 48 ounces per day. I'm going to try and kind of get some of this stuff out of here, some of the extra. Again, I don't recommend doing this on, you definitely don't want to do this type of thing when you're dealing with, you know, like anything that's like 32 ounces or low. I mean, realistically, I would only do this personally with like gallons. When I'm dealing with gallon measurements, that's when I would do this pour thing. Um, you have, you'd have to be very um, sure that you're getting most of it out of there. All right, so we need two parts of part A. What I'm doing here is I, I want to mix up the whole bucket, you know, the, the entire amount first. And then I'm going to split it off into my respective cups. Okay, so we got another 48 ounces of part A. So that's the two parts of part A. Try and kind of scrape this as good as I can. When you're dealing with a very large volume or, or, or amount, you know, or whatever, it's a little bit less important that you're dead perfectly even. You know, it, it, there's, it's just there's, there's a lot more. Um, leeway for, for error. And then I'm going to pour 48 ounces of part B. So this is the, the part, the one part, part B. Okay. And we'll dump that in there.
Okay. We got that rolling there. And I just have a battery operated drill, but I do have a, a spare battery ready to rock at any time whenever I need it. So I just get these guys on Amazon. I don't have a link or anything right here handy, but um, just look for like paint mixer or paddle mixer or something like that. And you don't necessarily need to mix this up fast. So I'm gonna drop it. I have on my drill, I have a, a speed one and a speed two. And one is a little bit slower. I'm also gonna look at the clock. We're at 3.33 on that clock. I wanna be mixing this for at least five minutes. Um, and then I also wanna scrape the edges with my silicone spatula. We just got this new wine country mat in. And this, uh, this surface really isn't uh, non-stick or anything like that. So let's put that down so that when I spill half of this, <laughs> it'll go on the, the mat. All right, so there's my mark. You got one down. Two down. We having fun yet, guys? I'm having fun. Hopefully you guys are too. And hopefully, yeah close pretty close not that worried about it probably get there eventually if I let this thing drip forever I'm not that worried about it though okay Just wipe that edge up a little bit And I do have a little bit of resin left if I need to add more for some reason. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys a little bit tighter maybe in here while I'm mixing this uh, the dye in. You can kind of see what we're doing with the dye. I don't want to add a lot. Um, so again, these are the fluorescent dyes from Illumilite. That one goes there. Um, I like to shake these up now. That <laughs> In the past, they've always said to shake these. I don't know if they've changed the formula or whatever, but I would recommend shaking it up a little bit just to make sure. And then what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go for a very small amount. I just want to put a little drop in. This is the red. Oh, this one is not open. Ah, I'm going to open this real quick. Okay, so here we go. Red. Small drop. We don't want a lot. And this stuff tends to kind of come out in big blobs. So we're going to try to be very careful with this. Oh, there it goes. We could do like the toothpick thing, but I think that like a drop for this amount is probably going to be good. So that's a pretty small drop right there. You saw that, right? And I'm gonna get my, got an HDPE little stir stick thing here. I could have used the, I guess the paddle mixer if I wanted, but the problem that I have is these buckets are pretty full. And so I'd, I think it's better to just do this manually. Now that, that's looking pretty pink. So we're gonna definitely need more. So that's why, again, this is why I like to sneak up because I, I don't really know how much I really need on this. <clears throat> but I do want it to be vibrant. Vibrant, but see-through. So you're best off just kind of sneaking. Sneaking and creeping. Still pretty pink. 
looking for another drop. Kind of pinkish. I want to add a little bit more here. <clears throat> There we go. Now we're getting a little bit more red. It's still kind of pink. I don't know. Whatever. I'm cool with pink too, I guess. I think I'm going to add one more drop. If it's not, the red's going to be on the inside anyway. So if it's less see through, that's okay. There we go. Now it's, it's looking a little bit more red to me. Kind of pink. Whatever. All right, so we got orange. And I need another stick. I guess I'll just use my spatula in this one. I'll add... I'm going to add two drops to start with the orange. These don't necessarily, just because you got one reaction or you know one one thing with one of these colors that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the same with each one so okay looking pretty pretty similar another drop in there we go that's looking a little bit more orange kind of peachish a little bit peach I think we're going to need one more. I'd say the orange and the red are kind of similar in how they operate. And if you want this stuff to be really vibrant, then you're going to want to add, you know, grams of it probably a lot, you know, a good amount. I want this to be more on the, the see-through side so I can handle a little bit of, you know, pinkish looking and sherbet orange. For this project, that's okay with me. But if you add more, then it, it definitely turns. Uh, you guys probably, you know, most of you guys probably saw that tequila sunrise. That looked, it was kind of sherbet but I mean, it was vibrant, you know. All right, so I would say that's pretty good. I like that. And we got our yellow. Okay, so I'm going to move these guys down. See if there's anything in the chat ha happening here. Good. Not missing anything, I don't think. Oh, that's like open. See, good reason to have eyeglasses on when you're shaking your thing that you opened up, I guess, with dye in it. Things can get crazy. Where's my, I knew I had paper towels somewhere. It was just a little spot, no problem. All right, <clears throat> shake it up. And I think we could probably get away with like one drop on this one. I need to get a stick. Got another stick here, another HDPE. Let's go for a little bit more. Oh, phone's ringing. Oh. I'm going to close all these things while I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Wipe up the dye that I flung all over the place. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's looking nice. I like that. That is fluorescent, guys. Serious fluorescent. Okay, so again, the game plan with this is I want to pour these two at the same time. I'm actually going to pour them like this. I want the red to be furthest in, orange. And then I don't have three arms, so we're going to pour the yellow at the end, and we're going to kind of put that here. I don't know how that's going to work out. I'm not that worried about it. 
I think it'll, you know, even if it does kind of mix this up into some kind of crazy concoction, I have a feeling it's going to look cool, <laughs> you know, so not really that worried about it. No big deal. All right, so I'm going to wipe off these sticks here, or maybe I'll just kind of put them on the side. Paper towels down because I might need them again. Wipe the, to, to like kind of scrape out the buckets, but initially I just want to get them out of there so I can grab them and not have to worry about them. Okay, so let's make sure you guys can see what's happening here. Nope. I'm going to bring you right here. I'm going to zoom you out just a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit better. Okay, glasses on. And let's see, I'm going to stop real quick and I'm just going to check and see if there's any questions or anything going on. Are you guys ready for the pour? This is going to be pretty fun, I think. I like, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking doing large volumes like this. this is, and this isn't like gigantic, but, um, you know, considering like river tables are huge, but um, I think it's pretty fun. Like it's nerve wracking, but fun. So um, especially something like this, there's not a lot going on. It's not going to, it shouldn't, there shouldn't really be any problems. I don't think um, I'm not that worried about anything. So um, again, I didn't seal the wood. I dried it for a week in the oven and literally just took it out. It's still warm to the touch. So we should be good to go with moisture. I think, um, you know, it's not a bad idea to put a kind of a seal coat on top with either, um, they have their, their the Alumilite has that seal coat that's like a 20 minute epoxy. I mean, frankly, you could use five minute epoxy if you wanted, um, or like an ACC plus or, or regular. I would probably just use the regular if you have that. Um, that's like a 40 minute wipe it all on it. And one little trick that Alumilite, I never even thought about this. They'll actually pour epoxy down into the, the form and then that'll kind of glue your parts down. Now, I really don't think these are going to float or go anywhere. Um, so I'm not worried about it, but um, that will, you know, if you pour that, that 45 minute, you, you wipe, you know, cover all surfaces of your wood chunks, pour a little bit down in your mold box and then stick the wood chunks in there for like river tables or whatever you're doing. Um, in, you know, about 40 minutes, that's going to kind of set up and it'll lock everything down in your mold. So you don't have to put clamps and mess around with all that stuff. I thought that was a brilliant, um, <clears throat> you know, a uh, little tip that they came up with. I don't know if they, they specifically came up with it, but is that camera? Am I standing right in front of the camera? Probably, probably I got a little bit of just dye on there. Okay. Good to go. So let's, uh, let's move this thing. Just kind of over a little bit. <clears throat> Cause I'm going to be standing kind of right in front of this thing. Uh, one other thing that I do want to mention is this table is pretty level for the most part, this assembly table. Um, this side really does need to come up. Frankly, I don't want to mess with it. I, I thought that I had already done it and I, I just, I don't have shims and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do instead is I have these little body shims um, that I use. And it's the same thing that I use to level my pressure pots. Um, but all I need to do is just barely get this thing up. It's good, you know, like from, from this side to this side, it's level. Um, but there's just a slight, needs to slightly tilt up. So I'm just going to tilt up my mold box and we'll be good to go. So I got four of these little body shims. Let me get them kind of evenly spaced again. So that I checked it with a level and everything's good. So this should be pretty level. I'm not even that worried about it. It doesn't matter that much, but um, cause I'm going to have to run this through the planer and, and do some, you know, flattening of everything. Um, even the two wood chunks are not even the same thickness. Um, so um, I'm only going to pour up to the top of this one probably. But I just wanted to mention that everything's pretty well leveled. Good enough. I would say I'm going to put my glasses on. I got red in the right hand, orange in the left hand. Got a handle or something. All right. So I think I'm good. Are you guys ready? Here we go. That's cool. It's kind of uh, mimicking the, the like curvature of the wood. So it's kind of triangular the way this is dividing. I'm going to mess all that up when I pour the yellow in, but that's okay. I'll try, I'll bring the camera in so you guys can kind of see what this looks like. Um, 
this is wicked. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say right now, this is awesome. Um, there is a div division line kind of thing. Now, this th they may kind of pour, you know, like mix together over time. I don't know how this is exactly going to work. Um, again, with hours of, of, you know, open time, let's just say. It has a two-hour working time, but it really doesn't set up for like many hours. Um, many, many hours, all right? So... You know, this may kind of bleed together. I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure how, how it's going to work. That's why we're testing this out a little bit. But, man, that's so cool. Actually, you can see that. See the division line in the colors? <laughs> that's pretty sweet. So, in a perfect world, I would probably just let this sit and not do anything. But I do have this yellow, um, which... I want it on this side, so it's going to kind of mess up. I, I really like how this is kind of curved, the division kind of thing. And one thing I could do, like I said, I have no clue if this is going to want to kind of bleed together over the hours that it's going to sit here. I'm kind of thinking it would just stay, frankly. I, I, I actually kind of, that's, that's my guess right now, but I don't know. Um, but one thing that I can do is if I want this to not just be a, like a kind of a division line, you can kind of blur this together by kind of getting a stick and just ble you know, kind of blending it. Um, but man, this is, this is sweet. I like it. I like it. So here's the game plan. Now the problem is now I'm going to pour this third one in and it's just going to push everything everywhere. Right. And that's okay. I'm, I, I knew that was going to happen. One thing I could maybe do is pour it into the corners. And maybe it would just kind of squish it. I'm thinking that might be a kind of a cool idea. What do you guys think about that? Do it, <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> oh, man. Commenting on stuff that, oh, do, commenting on things that already happened. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I'm going to try and pour some into the corners kind of lightly so it doesn't totally mess it up, let's say. Now, things are going to kind of change with this. I don't know if that... Yeah, I have a feeling there's there's like cracks, you know, there's there's like edges where the, the resin over time is going to kind of seep into these cracks between the, the wall and the wood, stuff like that. I might actually even use some of this yellow to kind of just pour over the top and fill um, some of those things. It looks like this side is pretty full right there, but this one looks a little low possibly on this side. I don't know. I can't tell. I think the corners would be a good idea, and I can kind of pour it onto the wood and let it kind of soak down. Um, but I've almost got this one covered. I think that this is going to do this amount of resin should get me where I want to be. I don't, it doesn't even matter if it's like totally covering this one. Um, I'm just going to plane it anyway. Now I do need the resin. Um, unfortunately, I, I do want to get it a little bit higher. This is, this is the exact amount of resin that I want. Um, but <clears throat> I think let's go for the corner. Um, actually, one thing I'm going to do is let, let's just pour it on the top. I just want to see what happens. How much this moves around. Because the main thing is I just need to get the volume of the resin, you know, of everything up. And so I think maybe that's, that might be the kind of the game plan there. Kind of pour it into the corners. Of the wood even. And we might kind of... I still kind of want a little bit of yellow in the front, so Let's see what we can do here. I'm just going to be kind of kind of gentle. It's not moving too much. I'm going to kind of push the stuff up. Yeah, I'm going to kind of get into there. Got to be a little bit more careful, I think. Now we got just barely yellow tips at the ends. That's actually, I, I like that. That's really cool. Then I'm going to keep adding to the backs of these pieces of wood just to kind of fill the volume up a little bit more in this mold. Hopefully. That's the, that's the game plan anyway. Oh, the 
It's starting to move a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay. So I am going to have to clamp this a little bit. Didn't think it was going to move too much, but I think it is. I'm going to pour a little bit more in the corners here. So if you're careful, it won't it won't upset it too much, you know, but if you're if you're pouring anything in, you know, in one area in a mold, it's it is going to make everything else move. So if you need to pour multiple colors like, you know, for like pen blanks and things, an easy way to do it is use paper cups and you can pour like three in each hand, right? If you want things to kind of settle the way, you know, wherever you've poured it. Um, but any, no matter what you're doing, if, you, if you're pouring into a mold after the stuff is, you know, in there, it's going to always make it move around. So just kind of be aware of that a little bit. Um, it, it gets kind of tough to, to add down the road, let's say, you know. And I knew this was going to happen, you know, it just, I only had two hands. But I did want to have three colors. I was just kind of curious to see how that would work. I was actually thinking in my head to do the front, you know, just to pour it in the front, which I could probably get away with pouring a little bit down here. But I do, I like these kind of end, like the little tips here. I, when I thought of that, I was like, oh, that's, that's sweet. We got it almost all the way in here. I think I'm just going to kind of pour a little bit more on the tops of these things to kind of kind of wipe it around a little bit. All right, there we have it. I think this thing's gonna be pretty sweet. Okay, so I'm just gonna take and kind of cover top of this thing. I'm gonna push some of this stuff off actually down into the corner. I think what's going on is there's probably resin seeped underneath the pieces of wood. So I do think I'm going to grab some HDPE and just kind of stick, I guess, a clamp or something on there. Um, just to kind of hold it down a little bit more. Let me go grab some HDPE chunks and I might kind of keep an eye on this thing. Um, later on after the stream and, just, you know, I can always kind of come back fix anything that I need to. We got a couple little chunks here. I don't know exactly how this is going to work. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely want to hold this down. Um, so what I think I might do, it's not going to really require a lot. I think I just need to get some weight on top of this thing mostly. So I think let's, uh, I'm going to grab a parallel clamp and just kind of shove it on top of that thing. I think the weight We'll just kind of keep it in place the way that I want. Mm. 
I'm just gonna kind of push down across that piece of HDPE and then just kind of clamp it to the, I need to get some more screw. <laughs> I ran out of screw guys. Okay. And just make sure that this is, yeah, that's held down. So that's good. That one's fine. And then let me find a piece of three quarter inch. That'll work a little better. And another clamp and we'll be good to go. <clears throat> so definitely benefits to, to, you know, kind of sealing it and then, um, you know, laying down a, a really thin coat of epoxy in the bottom of the mold first, um, obviously, because then you can kind of, you don't have to be messing around with all this stuff at the end, basically. I guess really it would make more sense just to do it that way. Then it won't fall off. Um, another thing about these pieces of wood is they're not flat <laughs> on like any side. So I'm kind of moving them around and I don't know if they're floating or not, but there's, they're kind of rounded. At least one of them was like super dished. So not really that surprised that resin got kind of underneath there. Um, and I don't know if it's really any indication that it's floating, you know, or anything like that either. Um, it's just, they weren't perfect. I figured, I'm going to pour the resin and then I'll do all the milling and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's easier to do that on something that's square anyway. <laughs> These things were kind of awkward. So I'm pretty stoked about it though. Hopefully I had the camera on everything right. Yep. I, even, I didn't even mess the cameras up guys. What? On a roll. Just going to kind of pop some bubbles now. I'm sure that I'm going to get things floating in here and whatever and that's fine it's you know i'm really not going to worry about it that much this is going on the wall in my own shop if it ain't perfect whatever i'm not going to worry too much about it but it is pretty clear right now there's bubbles kind of floating to the surface here but i mean i i think that uh, i'll come back and kind of blow torch this a couple times but i think that we're pretty good actually i'm just gonna i'm looking at i see see some bubbles in this area that i don't think i got there are a couple floaty chunks one thing that i didn't do that i probably should have is blown out the mold and maybe even blown off the pieces of wood before i put everything together but i didn't <laughs> you know <laughs> forgot didn't think about it uh, so Tammy's asking how long to cure it. Um, so that stuff, so it's got a two hour working time. That means like it's liquid, uh, how long it's going to be liquid that you can mix it, pour it, do all that stuff. Um, it's got a, I want to say a, let me read the directions. <laughs> that, that's probably the best plan of attack here. Okay. So it says tack free time, 24 to 72 hours. So that would be kind of like the demold time, I guess, in a sense. Um, you know, when is it kind of like really set up? It's in hard, not, not gooey and, you know, sticky or anything like that. And then, uh, the cure time is five to seven days. Probably I would say just seven days, you know, a week. Um, so at this point it's going to be just sitting there for days, um, curing, uh, you know, if you got a, a, a two inch pour like that, something kind of thicker, that'll probably end up being uh, on the shorter side of things. Most likely, um, the, the more mass that you pour at once, the, the warmer it gets when it's kind of, you know, doing its exothermic reaction, chemical reaction. Um, thinner things, I mean, I've seen, you know, like I've, I've poured dice, like the tiny dice mold things. And it worked fine with deep pour even, um, but the, these little tiny things. Um, and that, that stuff took like a week for it to like, you know, fully harden up, but it worked. Um, so this thing, you know, it's probably going to be nice and hard, probably I would say in like 24 hours, most likely it'll be maybe a little tacky on the surface, but it'll probably be nice and rigid. Um, and then, like I said, I'll probably just wait the full five, pro probably seven days. Um, and then the next steps on this thing, what I'm going to do is I'll run it through my planer. Uh, well, first things first, what I might do is, is do the, I have, I built one of those, um, router sleds to kind of flatten things. 
So the thing is you can't really just run something through the planer. You need to have a flat side and then the planer will, will match whatever's on that bottom side. So in theory, well, in, in reality, if you had a banana shaped thing and then stuck it through the planer, what's going to happen is it's just going to shave off the top layer. It's not going to actually flatten anything. So you need to start with a flat side or you need to kind of wedge stuff. There's just tricky ways that you can use a planer to get things flat. But um, what I'll probably do is router sled the top to get it totally flat, flip it over, run it through the planer to get that other side, then you know hit the table saw to kind of clean up the edges. And then it's just a lot of sanding at that point. So, um, but that's not gonna happen, like I said, I'm gonna wait that, that seven days before I mess around with anything.